ഓം നമോ നാരായണായ ഹരി ഹോം പ്രണാമ സ്വാമിജി ഇൻ ക്ലാസ് എയ്റ്റ് സ്വാമിജി ഇൻട്രോഡ്യൂസ് ടു സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻറ്റ് വേദാന്തി കൺസെപ്റ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് അൻവയ ആൻഡ് വ്യതിരേഖ ആൻഡ് ഭാഗത്യാഗ ആൻഡ് സ്ട്രെസ് ദാറ്റ് വി മസ്റ്റ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദീസ് വെൽ ബിഫോർ പ്രൊസീഡിങ് ഫർദർ ദിസ് അൻവയ വ്യതിരേഖ മെത്തേഡ് ഓഫ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി എ ലോജിക് used for the mananam or contemplation of all what we study it is said in shloka 37 that through the anvaya vidrega when panchakosha vivekam is taken up my own swarupam is lifted up then one realizes the aham brahmasmi jnanam shloka 38 gives the process of analysis and defines anvaya and vidrega it says that when the gross body is not there in the dream atma the awareness shines the existence of consciousness when the body does not exist it is anvaya the word meaning of anvaya is concordance or presence when your mind is concentrated with atma other things like gross body does not exist so the non existence of the physical body when the consciousness exists is called vyatireka so vyatireka means absence Sloka 39 takes the deep sleep state in the state there is the absence of subtle body even in the absence of or abhava of linga sharira the consciousness the awareness shines this is a two way argument method to establish the presence of atma in all states the meditation here is to minus and remove the states one by one this is difficult in causal body because the mind does not work there therefore by auto suggestion in the waking state itself the mind must be conditioned to do this that experience is called deep meditation or samadhi where there is only awareness that is called turiya when these bodies are separated then there is a real experience of atma this logic is called anvaya vidrega which is the two way argument of presence and absence in shloka 40 the direct benefit of anvaya vidrega technique is explained by this discrimination technique we can separate pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha and vijnanamaya kosha from us when the subtle body is separated in deep sleep then there is no pranamaya manomaya and vijnanamaya this is the process this sadhana has to be done in the waking state because in deep sleep you do not do anything the force behind our sadhana will lead us to the state with auto suggestion and this experience as sadhana happens only with shraddha of shastra and guru vakyam the separation is on the basis of proportion of the sattva raja and tamo gunas when vijnana or buddhi is purified it can receive the reflection of atma directly and give you the reflection of atma brahma karya vritti the knowledge of brahman Shloka 41 says that in samadhi state deep sleep is not there but the consciousness is there in the deep meditation state existence and consciousness are there and you are aware of that it is a real waking state where you do not perceive anything outside and we call this turiya in that state there is absence of all else this is the causal body discrimination Shloka 42 tells how one reaches this point only in the waking state when your mind is ready for that practice vedanta works you have to put your full concentration for a long time with tremendous practice to be able to get into the stage only a dhira a brave sadhaka with determined mental intellectual power can do this it means you need patience concentration and should be ready for a long time practice Acharya says that with this logic if you could separate yourself from this bondage of all these three bodies then one will be in brahma consciousness so we can understand that this body consciousness is separating us from our original self consciousness the 43rd shloka is about the practice of anvaya vidrega for the discrimination of atma from all these three bodies we look for the proof in shastra pramana we have discussed oneness of brahman and jiva the all pervading consciousness and individual consciousness now this individual consciousness which is suffering from birth and death can be identified with infinite consciousness we proved it logically and established this through reasoning with anvaya and vidrega 
with this technique we have established the ekata or oneness of paramatma and jivatma this is what tattvamasi vakya says shastra say you are that to understand this we have to follow a technique the technique is called bhagatyaga therefore with bhagatyaga lakshana the process is explained with logic and proof bhaga means one portion tyaga means giving up so bhagatyaga means giving up a portion the irrelevant parts are given up and the formality is used to compromise this bhagatyaga is also called as jahat ajahat lakshana Swami Ji concluded with this. Now let us listen to Swami Ji with Bhakti and Shraddha. ృదస్మృతిపురాణానాయం కరుణాలయం నమామి భగవత్పాదం శంకరం లోకశంకరం శంకరం శంకరాచార్యం కేశవం బాధరాయణం సూత్రభాష్యకృత వందే భగవందో పునః పునః ఈశ్వరో గురురాత్మేది మూర్తి భేద విభాగినే వ్యోమవ్యాప్తేహాయ దక్షిణామూర్త నమ శ్రీదక్షిణామూర్తనమస్రేశంకరాందరుపాదాంబుజన్మే సవిలాస మహామోహ గ్రాహగ్రాసైకర్మణి శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ హరి ఓం సో వి హావ్ స్టార్టెడ్ వన్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టెక్నిక్ ఆర్ మెథడ్ ఆఫ్ వేదాంత విచ్ హోల్డ్స్ a important uh, part of vedanta the oneness of consciousness now when we think about ourselves there are so many contradictories though we are learning vedanta for many years but our identification with body or the experiences through body mind senses are the same and we are conceiving the same ideas with our vasanas the previous uh, tendencies so therefore though we are very serious learners of vedanta in our deeper mind even in our deeper mind there is a contradictor contradictory uh, state of no uh, awareness that uh, takes us or we always doubt on it so why we are uh, not experiencing that experience what is the reason we say there is ignorance 
therefore we are uh, unable to experience that all pervading consciousness now after all what is that ignorance is the ignorance is not not accepting ignorance here you cannot define what is ignorance this mula vidya we call it the root ignorance of atma which is we call as mula vidya mula means this is the cause for all experiences all other avidyas now we experience ourselves and we don't know what is our true nature this itself is a contradiction now we depend so much on our uh, brain activity intellectual activity so when we learn if we learn very uh, thoroughly and uh, our thoughts are very clear if we have we have some clarification then we think we know it and if there if there is any doubt or the the concept uh, the concept is not clear then we think we have we have not conceived it we don't know it so it means we are so much depend on our individual intellect for this brahman atman experience i say this itself is a problem this itself, itself is ignorance so that is the contradiction what we are call, uh, calling it why we uh, need to analyze more so that is the reason our acharya here vidyarani mahaswami ji is taking up this subject how we can put some more experience and more logic into our intellectual uh, ideas on vedant so therefore it is like you no know, the the root ignorance we call it mula vidya and this is some uh, something uh, rooted in our mind this contradiction is also root, rooted there when we think about ourselves we can't uh, leave and say i am not a man i am not a woman i am not this i am not that when our our thought starts it starts with that so then what is the problem problem is this this contradiction in is there in our mind so the intellectual grasping is necessary without that we can't uh, uh, change anything because first we have to in uh, know intellectually then that is not enough we should not stay there we should move forward with more uh, clarity and more open mind to receive more thoughts so this is the idea uh, here that uh, we were discussing like bhagatyaga so the bhagatyaga the bhagatyaga is the only one technique to remove this contradiction so like in a sentence if we are uh, uh, no when we uh, make uh, we say something if two opposite ideas combined then the sentence is not conveying 
its correct meaning. Similarly here, the one side we say our self is consciousness, the consciousness is all pervading. So we have universal consciousness, consciousness everywhere. And we have uh, uh, this Virat, this Thula Sharira, Sokshma Sharira. Like that. No, Samashti and Vesti. So all these ideas we uh, we uh, we think about those. So Bhagatyaga says, if you leave this opposite adjuncts attributions of Brahman and Jiva, the individuality and the universal universal uh, uh, no, 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 level of understanding samashti so sub, now we, that is separated therefore this contradiction is there so give up all those portion all those uh, qualities attributions of both this uh, uh, individual and the cosmic consciousness. Then you will land on the state like uh, accepting only consciousness, the pure consciousness without attributions. Then you have completed your uh, manana of Vedanta. So there, there is the uh, that is the state where we complete our manana. Now there is no manana. So this is the last part of manana. So separate all the attributions of universal consciousness, what we call it uh, cosmic consciousness, universal consciousness, the samashti consciousness. Like Ishwara, Hiranyagarbha, or Virat. So now Ishwara is also attributed with Maya. Hiranyagarbha is attributed with the uh, subtle body, universal subtle body consciousness. And the Virat is attributed with universal gross body consciousness. So therefore they are separate. Now you cannot say I am that. So here, in our state of consciousness, we are individual, very much separated from others. I am qualified with uh, many things. I am not he or I am not she. I am not that, I am not this. So now how we are going to uh, conceive the idea of oneness there? It cannot be. Even intellectually accepting his problem. Intellectually, when we intellectually accept that, that try to accept that, the contradictions will come. How can I say I am uh, omnipresent? How can I say I am omniscient? I am even try, no, trying hard to learn this uh, Panchadeshi as a test book. How, how come I... Uh, Omniscient. No, this is this is the idea there. Now to remove this, we have to remove the attributions. We have to remove the attribution fundamentally. There is no chance for any attribution in consciousness in yourself. You have attributed your gross body as beautiful body and you are attributed your mind, intellect, knowledge and along with that all the qualification whatever you uh, we can think about what whatever you are aware about those qualities are attributed in that. Now all, with all these qualities 
if you go and uh, uh, try to uh, make oneness with that supreme consciousness is not possible it won't come why the reason direct reason is the intellect no oh, be careful with this point huh? a very important point why we are unable to conceive it now the intellect is able to only able to conceive perceive and process this attributed knowledges it means body mind sense organs objects like that intellect has only that quality that ability intellect is unable to directly perceive and uh, no experience the pure consciousness now if you are unable to do something what do you would like to do you would like to do something what you are able to do you are uh, where you, you can uh, easily work on easily proceed on you will choose that work and do it so this is the situation of our intellect now intellect can very much perceive all those things are which are studied in even in vedanta or in shastras in scriptures and wherever it is very uh, very no free with all those it, it is easily conceived therefore it is after it intellect is after though all those ideas if someone is lecturing uh, no very good you will like to you will like to listen to why because you are you are receiving it you have some intellectual ideas you are uh, intellect is getting new ideas so it is uh, it is it is bringing that interest but there is nothing to do with the uh, pure consciousness there so if you say you conceive a pure consciousness intellect will not do that because it is unable to do therefore we have to use uh, use this logic of bhagatyaga bhagatyaga purely directly it means are uh, removing all the attributions from individual as well as the supreme consciousness what we call it as sachidananda brahma so when you could remove all those when you could separate all those discriminate all those you have received the knowledge the brahmatma jnana oneness of knowledge so tattvamasyaadi vakyai sa bhagatyagena lakshyate this is called bhagatyaga we have already studied that uh, bhagatyaga uh, you can uh, contemplate on more on that uh, because it is like no it is a scientific knowledge the method is very clear the process is clear formula is clear you can just contemplate on that logically you can understand now in the tatvamasi so meaning of tatvamasi the 44th shloka we are going to start with the meaning of tatvamasi 44 45th and 46th continued with the example of 47 So what is this tatvamasi? So tatvamasi, we have three words. Tatvamasi actually is a sentence, which uh, consists of three words. So one is tat. Tat means that. That indicated as supreme consciousness, supreme God, Ishvara or Sat. that is tat so that is called sat tat 
and that. And tom means you, because this is a direct speech. The guru directly speaks to the shishya there in front of him. Therefore, he called him Tom, you. So you, we know, which is individual, individual consciousness, individuality. So Tom, Tat Tom, and Asi is the third pada as a uh, verb. This is a normal verb which we call R. So you are that. You are that. Or that is you. So in both way we say, so though that though art. So you are that. So now what is this that? That is described in 44th sloka. Jagado yadupadanam maya madaya tamasi Nimittam shuddha sattvam tamuchyate brahma tadgira The Jagato Yadupadanam. The uh, sentence uh, would be like this the connections of the words Yada Upadanam Yada Tamasim Mayam Jagataha Upadanam Tam Shuddha Sattvam Nimittam Brahma Tadgira Uchyate Means Yada Upadanam Maya Tamasi Maya The Tamasa Tama aspect of Maya So Maya has Sattva Raja and Tama We know already So the Tamasa aspect of Maya. That is the Upadhanam of this world. Upadhanam means material cause. So the Tamasa Tamoguna aspect of Maya is the Upadhanam material cause of Maya. So, taking that material cause, Shuddha Sattvam Tam Nimittam Brahma Dadgira. So, the material cause is there. And the second part is sat Shuddha Sattva. The second aspect of Maya is Sattva. So, Sattva Taking the sattva as the nimitta, efficient cause, because for both efficient cause and material cause, the pure consciousness needs the support of maya. This, this is called the supportive uh, cause or attribution for consciousness. Now, the consciousness is attributed by the tamasa aspect of maya for material cause. And the same consciousness is attributed by sattva aspect of maya as efficient cause, for efficient cause. Now our Brahman, which was pure consciousness, attributionless, become attributed with the Maya, Astamasa, and Sattva. 
So when consciousness is with tamasa, aspect of maya become the material cause of, ultimate material cause of the creation. Upadana karanam. Okay? And the same consciousness when uh, connected with, attributed with, supported with sattva aspect of maya because sattva aspect has the power of knowledge because sattva aspect can produce knowledge or process knowledge. So therefore, because the efficient cause needs knowledge, the efficient cause means knowledge only. So for that purpose, Maya is taken as the support. So then, Nimittam Shuddha Sattvam Tam Uchyate Brahma Tadgira. Then the Brahma become the cause of creation, the ultimate cause of creation. Which cause? Abhinda Nimitta Upadana Karanam. That is the word we use in Sanskrit. Abhinna Nimitta Upadana Karanam. Now our Brahma is non-differentiated efficient cause and material cause together. Brahma is Abhinna. Abhinna means not differentiated. Nimitta means efficient cause. Upadana means material cause. Where, wherever we see cause and effect, there we can only see efficient cause separate and material cause separate. But here, here the story is different. Here the efficient cause as well as material cause, both are Atma only. So that is why it is called. Like in Mundaka Upanishad, there is an example of spider. A spider spinning its web. That Drishtanda, uh, uh, that example is given in Mundaka. So spider, when spider spins its web, it take out the material cause from inside and the spider itself does the work. The spinning of web is done by spider and the material cause is also coming out of spider. So this is how we understand this. Because when God created, he has, it seems he has tried his, uh, no, all the variations of things. However it possible, he tried it. So that is one example in, uh, in spider, you can see it is taking out the material cause from inside. It itself produces the material cause. And it spins the web itself. So it means it can be done. It is possible. So there are so many other uh, examples, even in uh, biology also we can give, there are so many examples. So it's possible because God has done it. So therefore, it's called Abhinna Nimitta Upadana Karana. Now, one point we have uh, to notice here is, now the Shuddha Brahma, we call it pure consciousness, Shuddha Brahma. Now, Shuddha Brahma, firstly attributed with Maya, become Karana Brahma. Karana Brahma is the causal, Consciousness, positive consciousness, Karna Brahma. Then that Karna Brahma 
is efficient cost plus material cost. This is the chart. So first, uh, Shuddha Brahma, pure consciousness, without any attribution, even Maya is not there, nothing is there. Only consciousness is there, Satchidananda is there. With that, we can't create anything. The, the conception of creation cannot be attributed to the pure consciousness. It is impossible because it is it has no action. It is actionless. Moveless. It cannot do anything. It can only exist. It can only be free or like uh, it can only be in the form of experience as bliss. Sat, chit, ananda. But it cannot create anything. Or destroy anything or there is no movement, no action. So therefore it is called pure consciousness. So with this, we can't make a theory of creation. Okay. So we want to make a theory of creation. For what? To describe, to analyze, to understand the creation outside. Now we experience the creation outside. We want to know how this is created. How my body is created? How am I? How I am created? How I I, I become a human being? So this this uh, for this purpose, we have to attribute. We have to bring Maya concept there, because without that, nothing can be done. In Maya, what is there? In Maya, all the karmas are there. Again, the part of material cause, karma. Without karma, nothing can be created. We can say the, the universal uh, karma, unseparated karma, all the karmas are there. Without separation. The bundle of karma is with the maya. Out of those karma, the creation process starts. Then when karmas are ready to give its effect, its production, to produce something, then the creation starts. So maya has some activity. So Maya is with the, uh, the Purusha, with the uh, Chaitanya. Therefore, we say Chaitanya is creating. Though Maya is creating, the creation process is taken place in Maya only. But in this condition, the Chaitanya consciousness cannot be separated from Maya and Maya cannot be separated from Chaitanya. So we call it the creation is done by Supreme God. Okay. So like when we sit in a car, the car is moving. We are only sitting there we are we have no motion we are motionless sitting uh, no that seat but what we say i am moving i am traveling so this is the idea here actually the consciousness is not moving it is motionless but where the consciousness is attributed or connected that element which is called maya is moving and creating and making everything. Therefore, it, it is attributed. Like we say, I am moving. Uh, though the car is moving, we call it, uh, we uh, say that I am moving. Similarly, the consciousness 
is called non differentiated efficient cause and material cause abhinna nimitta upadana karanam so jagataha yada upadanam maya madaya tamasim nimittam shuddha sattvam tamuchyate brahma tadgira this is an important point no uh, in connection with the creation of vedanta the god becomes material cause of the universe in the form of tanmatras first now when the creation starts first in the form of tanmatras we know we call it subtle body no subtle subtle body universal subtle body is tanmatra sushma sharira after that the panjikaranam the contiplications comes with the five elements separated and uh, in, asso in association with those five elements the sushma sharira astula sharira is manifested and uh, the same god in association with the sattva of maya creates the intellect the uh, the instrument for knowledge then that intellect is reflected the consciousness of atma become jiva jivatma so when the intellect is manifested there the reflection comes that is the creation of jiva now how jiva is created the material cause is from maya and the reflective consciousness is from consciousness so both together is called andakarana vishishtam chaitanyam so andakarana pradivimbidam chaitanyam the reflected consciousness in andakarana in my uh, in the mind therefore we have individuality we are separated from all those all others so this way uh, this uh, consciousness become the cause of the creation that is what is described in this shloka so the next shloka is saying about the tampata now tatpada is described here tatpada is brahma this uh, brahman as the creator the all pervading brahma yada malina satvam tam kama karma didushitam adatte tat param brahma tvam padena tadochyate yada when kama karma di dushitam malina sattam malina sattvam adatte so when now how jiva is created just now we discussed that so when that supreme brahman that consciousness takes kama karma dushita malina sattva so the first one was shuddha sattva the sattva part of uh, sattva aspect of uh, prakriti divided into two shuddha sattva pure sattva and and pure sattva malina sattva so why this uh, and pure sattva because in this sattva there is kama and karmas kama means the creating uh, desires we can say but these are already vasanas the previous impressions so those are there along with that karmas which are uh, already 
uh, performed the karma phala, what we say uh, as karma in our mind. So it means this uh, sattva is unpure because it has desires and karma. It means it is mixed with rajoguna and tamoguna. So, kama karma di dushita. Though in all the gunas, all the uh, different uh, uh, manifestation of gunas consist of all these three. They are there. If you see the content of any object, you will find all these three gunas. Traikunyam. This is the manifestation. Therefore, now in uh, this individual consciousness, we can see kama and karma as well as malina sattva. So malina sattva tam kama karma adatte. When this uh, Brahma receives this tatparam Brahma, that same supreme consciousness becomes tvam padena tadochyate. Then that consciousness is called as tvam, at you, me. So I am, you are. So the jivas are created. Individuals are created. Now, if you separate this Malina Sattvam, this impure Sattva Guna and Kama Karma, or this, then what is left over? That is pure consciousness. Because this is added into that. So, then your original uh, form is consciousness only. So this is what is added there. So Malina Sattam Tam Dushita Tinti. This is called attribution. Now for the Supreme Lord, Maya with Shuddha Sattva is attribution. Okay. For uh, individual soul, uh, the Malina Sattva the impure sattva and kama and karma is attribution. So kama desires, old desires and new desires, vasanas plus the present desires. Karma, the previous karmas and new karmas, performing karmas. So both are there. So if we can remove all this, by Pancha Kosha Viveka. No, no, if we practice the Pancha Kosha meditation, as we already have seen in last uh, sessions, so we could practice that, then we can identify ourselves with this pure consciousness state of uh, Atma, the purest form of that. So then it is said, Tritaima pitam muktva paraspara virodhini akhandam satchidanantam mahavakena lakshyate. So when these three aspects of Maya is rejected, is separated. Tridai mapi tam muktva. Because what is three? Tamasi aspect, Shuddha sattva aspect, and Malina sattva aspect. These are the three. So if we could separate all these three aspects of Maya, how are they? Paraspara virodhini. 
all those three you know mutually contradictory they have no connection mutually their uh, character their character is different so paraspara virodhinim mutually incompatibles sattva raja and tama you cannot connect sattva raja and tama here raja is not separated but uh, we have to understand raja also because this function uh, in sattva and uh, tama is taken place only by raja's support so raja is there already so these three gunas are mutually uh, contradictory and incompatible it cannot be settled in one place it cannot be uh, with one thing one one place so each activity is different therefore our mind also constantly changes one hour before the mind was something different after one hour it changes again changes again changes morning other mood and uh, uh, in the day time we have other activities uh, the mind moods are constantly changing because these gunas are constantly changing in our mind when our mind enter into sattva or the sattva guna is predominant in mind then we are ready to learn we are ready to uh, sit for meditation japa everything goes well we feel very good but immediately it goes to rajoguna when rajoguna rise up again the mood changes so this is uh, what is happening there what त्रितयम अभिताम मुक्तवा परस्पर विरोधिनीम त्रितयम अपि मुक्तवा नो व्हाट वी शुड डू अखंडम सच्चिदानंदम महावाक्येन लक्ष्यते बाय दैट महावाक्या तत्त्वमसि महावाक्या मींस द लिटरली मीनिंग इज वर्ड ग्रेट सेइंग्स महावाक्या हा the very important sayings mahavakyas so by that tattvamasi mahavakya we get from vedas scriptures so this tattvamasi mahavakya comes in samaveda chandogya upanishad so therefore it is directly from veda the great sayings mahavakya akhandam sachidanandam lakshyate so there you can experience or this uh, when we remove this three by this process of bhagatyaga uh, how we should know how to remove attributions so if we can do that then the akhanda sachitananda akhanda partless indivisible satchidananda brahma will be experienced now by this uh, meditation your mind will get into that state of consciousness so mind will get some indication of that all pervading brahma in that uh, meditation state mind will feel that i am with that i am connected to that this is my experience this should be my reality so this uh, implied meaning of that sentence brings mind into the real consciousness state so that is called lakshyartha the implied meaning 
we get by some signs, some indications called implied meaning. So by this getting into this implied meaning, we have to practice some sadhana or uh, Vedanta and we have to use some logic to get into this uh, knowledge state of this implied meaning. So therefore it is called Lakshyartha. So Akhandam Satchidanandam Mahavakyena Lakshyate. Now how we experience that how we can point out that consciousness by this Mahavakya, Tattvamasi Mahavakya. Because this is a small sentence with uh, three words, nearly th three words. Now how we can enter into that state? What is the logic there? The next sloka says, Soya mitya di vakeshu viroda taditantayo. Tyagena bhagayo reka ashrayo lakshate yatha. So, the Bhagatyaga Lakshana, what we uh, studied uh, in sloka number 43. Soyam Ityadi Vakyeshu. Now, one example is given. So, I am. Saha means he. He, he is this. This is he. Now when we say this is he, what does it mean? You know somebody, no, uh, maybe two days before, you have seen a person and after two days, you are seeing him again. So then what do you say? Oh, this is he whom I saw two days before, whom I met two days before. So now this sentence is technically wrong. Though we use this sentence very frequently, but this sentence is technically wrong. How? You see, whom you saw two days before. He was there in that place and that time. So that person whom you saw two days before, you have a memory of that person. Okay? With different uh, space, different time. Correct? Now, the same person is in front of you. You are directly seeing him. Here the place and time is different. And the perception is also direct perception, pratyaksha. You are seeing him directly. Now, the old memory comes, then that memory will definitely bring that place and time and that will contradict with this perception now presently you are having. Why? Because this place and time is different from that place and time. That's all. So the person who was there in that place and time cannot come here. That is over there and this is totally different. There is two, di two days different, 48 hours different. So the difference make the knowledge different because that knowledge become memory and this knowledge become 
pratyaksha, the direct perception. So therefore, it's called soyam ityadi vakyeshu. Now what we should do, our experience is the person is the same. Now how can you prove that? Because that place and time is different, this place is uh, time. Uh, this place and time is different. Now, how can you say that person is uh, the same? How you say that? How you experience that? So, brain makes this process because brain has this talent to do this, to recognize. So, this process we called as recognition. Correct. So we recognize the person whom we saw two days before. Now we recognize that person. So the recognition we called as pratyabhitnya in Sanskrit. So this recognition makes all this clear. Because rec when we recognize somebody, we remove the old part of that memory that place, that time. Because that place and time is contradicting with this place and time. So we re remove that place and time and we remove this place and time as well. Because if we keep both the places and times, it cannot come together. It cannot be combined. Are you getting me? What I am talking about? Because these two adjectives, two qualities, which is qualified with the person, is contradicting. Therefore, we have to uh, separate those qualities. Qualities means time and place, what we say, that person and this person. So that person with that time and space, and this person is this time and space, but the person is different from that time and space and this time and space. Right? So we want only that person, the pure form as he. We don't want the time and space and all these, these quali qualifications and the qualities. We remove all those. So this process is done by brain from our birth, it is happening. We don't know that we are never we are never aware about that. But this process is happening. This quality is there in the brain. Brain can do that. Therefore, we are using that quality of brain for this tattvamasi vakya as well. First, we are making a contradiction and giving to the mind with the logic a formula. To accept that and know it. So the mind will accept, oh, we have to remove all these uh, uh, attributions, qualities, because these are qualities are quantity. So brain will do that. Gradually it will process on that. Then ultimately it will get the, the purest form of that experience, that person. Thus the person is different from the time and space. This is how the person or the consciousness is beyond time and space. Because time and space is a qualification which is attributed according to the actions and uh, process, uh, the process of actions. If we don't do, we don't want anything we don't need any qualification. We want only the purest form of Brahman. We don't need any qualification. Right? So this is how this Tattvamasi is processed. So soyam ityadi vakyeshu virodhat. Ah, when we say in the sentence, this is that person. So there this and that refer to different time, different place. So they are contradicting. Therefore, we remove both of them. Tad idam tayoho. So we remove both of them. Like we remove, uh, when we uh, contemplate on Brahman, 
Ishwara, Atma, we remove all the qualities of Ishwara. So now Ishwara is the consciousness, pure consciousness. <coughs> not with the qualities as creator or not with the qualities as omniscient and all those. We don't uh, take any qualities. Any of the qualities. Just, just uh, remove those. And the individual person has our uh, our qualities, we have so many qualities, we remove all those. We, we have this human body, we have this human mind, human sense organs, all those karmas, ideas and everything, thoughts, mental thoughts and all those are removed, separated. Tyagena bhagayoho ekaha tyagena bhagayoho when we disconnect or remove all this, one substance is known, indicated. We can't say it is known because the intellect is not there. So we conceive that, somehow we conceive that but we cannot describe how we conceive. If I say you remove the this and that from that sentence, this is that person. This is the uh, this is uh, 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 that person. From this and that, if you remove those two, what left is that person is left. So the person is the purest form. Similarly, we can remove all the conditioning attributions uh, connected with us. That is called Tyaga, Bhaga Tyaga. So the, the irrelevant, unnecessary portion is removed from that sentence. So then uh, we land in the substance of that, the adhikaranam, the ashraya, the subtractum of that, the experiencer of all this. So, ashrayo lepchade tataha. So, that is called Brahman. That is called Atma. Maya vidde vihayevam upadhi parajivayo akhandam satchidanandam parabrahme valakshyate. You see how beautifully he is uh, describing it step by step. Nothing is missed. So, one by one, the, if you uh, take point by point, you will enter into the correct understanding of the idea. So, Maya Vidya Vihaya Evam Upadhi Paradiva Yoho. What was the Upadhi of Para, the Supreme Lord, and Jiva? The Upadhi means attribution, adjunct. Upadhi was Maya for Paramatma and Avidya for Jivatma. Now we remove all those because we don't want creation. There is no creation. So we don't want creation. If you don't want creation, you don't want to talk about creation, you don't need Maya. You don't need even Ishvara. Even Ishwara is not needed if you don't want to talk about the creation. Because if you want to talk about creation and know about creation, you need a creator. The supreme creator, universal creator. But we don't want. Then what is the need of Ishwara? So, the Maya is not there, then Ishwara is also left. Disappeared. And then, Avidya is the second Upadhi. Second uh, attribution 
और जीवा सो दिस इज द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ वेदांता हाउ वी मेक ईश्वरा और जीवा सेपरेट एंड हाउ वी कॉल ईश्वरा और जीवा इज वन सो एवरीथिंग इज देयर तो माया विद्ये विहाय एवं उपाधि पर जीवयो हो अखंडम सच्चिदानंतम तो दैट अखंडम सच्चिदानंतम अनसेपरेटेबल इनडिविजिबल दैट सच्चिदानंता सुप्रीम ब्रह्मन प्योर एक्सिस्टेंस कॉन्शियसनेस ब्लिस दैट इज कॉल्ड पर ब्रह्म लक्ष्यते that is para brahma so you experience that there so maya and avidya is superimposed or attributed on jiva and ishwara so let it go now those those attributions are not there so then there is no sattva rajas tama this process is also gone and if that those trigunas are not there there is no question of creation no question of uh, development manifestation destruction nothing is there okay so then one question is asked here in this shloka savikalpasya lakshyatve lakshyasya syada vastuta निर्विकल्पस्य लक्ष्यत्वम न दृष्टम न च संभवी तो सविकल्पस्य लक्ष्यत्वे लक्ष्यस्य स्याद अवस्तुता सविकल्प सविकल्प मीन्स विथ मॉडिफिकेशन now this vikalpa word is used in with different meanings here vikalpa means modification with changes which can hold all the modification is called savikalpa brahma if savikalpa brahma if that is to be indicated by tattvamasi then to be indicated that brahma may be non real non reality that is the question why because if there is no attribution you can know anything there is no knowing process the knowing the perceiving is happening because there is attribution therefore i just now i said no intellect is ready to receive all those which has which have all, all the attributions or different kind of attributions different kind of qualities no you, you won't be uh, 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 seeing that the quality if without quality nothing is received when you see something it has some quality when you think about something it has some quality so without quality nothing is received nothing is perceived nothing is thought about therefore it is said if savikalpasya lakshyatve lakshyasya syad avastuta निर्विकल्पस्य लक्ष्यत्वम न दृष्टम न संभवी therefore it is said the object without attributions nirvikalpa the object without modification like brahman what you are saying about uh, shuddha brahma so you saying about the pure consciousness which has no modification no attribution then it cannot be seen न दृष्ट न संभवी नॉट पॉसिबल टू नो 
nothing is possible because uh, it has no qualities what we are going to receive to receive something to conceive something we need something no there and not only this only finite is conceived Infinite, infinite is not conceived. This we know. So therefore, Savikalpasya lakshatve lakshasya avastudasyat. Then that lakshya, lakshya means the object which uh, may be known, but to be known, that is called a lakshya. So that become non-real. And nirvikalpasya lakshatam. And you can't make nirvikalpa modificationless object as the object for knowledge. Lakshyam, you cannot make it. So na drishtam, na sambhavi, it is not possible. So this is what is uh, asked by the Questioner, his idea is if you say that Brahman, which you experience, has no qualities, no modification, it means it cannot be known. And Savikalpa, if it has some qualities, Savikalpa Selakshatve, then what do you say? Because you say if uh, something some uh, if any object has some qualities, it has nama and rupa, then that nama and rupa is not real. That is what you say. No, Vedanta says that. So if that is that is not having nama and rupa, then it cannot be known. The first thing. The second thing, if that object has nama and rupa. That is not fit to be known because that is unreal. So in both way, your theory, uh, this philosophy is useless because it has no purpose, purposeless. For what, for what purpose we are uh, taking all this trouble to study because both way it has no purpose. This is the question from an opponent. No, our acharyas bring such opponents to open up our mind with these ideas to get in more, get into more clarification. Because when we uh, have this, uh, when we see this question, our mind is you no know, blowing. Then we get new ideas. Oh, this is it. It can be thought like this. So therefore, to blow up, up our mind, he brings all these questions, opponents' ideas. Because if we are unable to ask this question, he has to ask. Therefore, he is asking. Okay? So you got this question, then, the, uh, then we can see the answer in the slogan number 50. Vikalpo nirvikalpasya savikalpasya vabhavet Adye vyahadiranyatra anavasthatma shrayadadayaha Vikalpo nirvikalpasya savikalpasya vabhavet So, uh, now the Acharya is asking the opponent who asked this question or who, uh, uh, who brought this uh, objection is asking what is your idea, what you are asking. You are, uh, you are asking that nirvikalpasya savikalpasya va vikalpa bhavet Vikalpa means concept. So you are saying that the unmodific unmodificated form or uh, uh, which has no attribution, 
तो आट्रीब्यूशन लेस ब्रह्मन और द ब्रह्मन विथ आट्रीब्यूशन हैज द एट्रीब्यूशन हाउ कैन यू से दैट सो नो यू सी थ्री वर्ड्स आर देर फर्स्ट वन इज से निर्विकल्प मीन्स विदउट एट्रीब्यूशन मीन्स प्योर फॉर्म ऑफ ब्रह्म now what you are saying that pure uh, form of brahman the attribution less brahman has attribution that is what you want to say or the savikalpa brahman the brahman with attribution has attribution that you want to say what is what what do you want to say now the both the sentences are wrong both this sentence no because attribution less brahman Cannot be with attribution because the attribution less nirvikalpa means there is no attribution. If you say that, that sentence itself is self-contradictory. That is called vyahati, vyahati. So that sentence caught in self-contradiction. So this sentence cannot convey anything. No, I say. Uh, i am saying myself i am in silent so i am saying that i am in silent so if i am in silent i am in mauna i can't say if i say i am in mauna that saying itself contradict my mauna so there is no mauna for me so this is called caught in self contradiction sentences means uh, it is uh, uh, totally wrong if i am in mauna i can't say i am in mauna somebody else should uh, say so i am in mauna so otherwise i have to say like this i am in mauna yes if i am talking i am not in mauna so the mauni who is in uh, silent cannot talk if he is talking he is not in mauna similarly nirvikalpa ka nirvikalpa brahma contribution less or no attribution less brahma cannot have attribution so your question is wrong you are saying that attribution with attribution uh, uh, only brahman with attribution can be known or brahman without att attribution can be known this both is wrong so vikalpa first first thing has there is a problem that nirvikalpa cannot be uh, cannot have the concept of savikalpa so therefore it is said in the next uh, uh, line adya vya adye vyahati the first option has this self contradiction problem okay then the second one is savikalpasya vikalpo va bhave the brahman with attribution has attribution the brahman with attribution has attribution if you say this this and this is also wrong because we are already saying that brahman with attribution so if brahman with attribution then it is attributed only then why you should say that brahman with attribution has attribution what does it mean and if you say that brahman with attribution has attribution then you have to has say the brahman which has attribution has attribution again so there is no you can add on that so it is called anavastha infinite regress so because the first sentence itself is enough there is no need to add another there so you are adding that then your sentence is wrong because that sentence is not conveying anything special the with attribute the atma with attribution is attributed only so there is it as uh, it is not uh, 
attributed again. There is no need for attribution. Therefore, it is called anavastha. Anavastha means infinite regress, endlessness. So you add on, add on that idea again and again. And hours you will talk about that. But nothing will happen. So only you, at last, what do you get? The Brahman is attributed. Only that much you are going to conceive. But you are saying the with attribute, attributed Brahman has attribution. Then the attributed Brahman has attribution means there is something wrong. That is all. So anavastha. And not only that. Atma asraya uh, There are so many other uh, uh, no, uh, mistakes in this sentence. There are uh, other uh, uh, problems in this sentence that is called Atma Ashraya. Atma Ashraya means self dependence. That is called Atma Ashraya. Or mutual dependence. Mutual dependence, what does it mean? Like if somebody wants become father no he wants to be a, become a father now what he he should uh, do first he should marry a girl and then he should produce a uh, no a son no then you uh, children so if when he produces that children or he has children, then he become father. So his fatherhood is dependent on the production of production of children. So the production of children is dependent on the father. Because if father is not there, the production of children, the children are not there. So production of children is dependent on father. The father is dependent on production. Like the sonhood. We don't say son. The son whose hood is dependent on fatherhood. And fa fatherhood is dependent on sonhood. Like that motherhood is dependent on fatherhood. And fatherhood is dependent on motherhood. So these are called mutual dependence. It is very easy to say in Sanskrit. But... Uh, uh, it is difficult to say in uh, English because all these concepts are not are, uh, common no ideas we convey. Now, if, if, we, if we say the mother is dependent on father and father is dependent on mother, people will argue, what does it mean? What do you say? What does it mean? How the mother is dependent on father and father is dependent on mother? It, it means motherhood is dependent on father because if somebody wants to become a mother, uh, she needs a man. As father, okay. If, uh, if there's a, that man want, wants to become a father, he needs a lady, a, a mother, to conceive uh, uh, no, the the child, uh, the child. So this is how it is uh, dependence, mutual dependence. So this is also another problem, where the mutual dependence is there. The sentence is. Uh, consider as wrong sentence. So the idea is mutually dependent. And then there are so many other uh, things like uh, circular logic, circular logic, or the infinite regress like, like we just now we understood. Like there are so many uh, no, problems in sentence which uh, uh, diffuse the Idea of sentence. This is the uh, 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 problem in that sentence. That uh, if these problems are there, then the sentence, the meaning of sentence is diffused. So we will see that again. We already crossed the time. Okay, you can ask if you have any question. Hadion Swamiji. Yeah. Swamiji, there is a question in the U YouTube. Okay. Yeah, the question is from Ramakrishnan KV. 
And actually, he asked the question in Malayalam. The Malayalam question is like that. Onnu mariyade atnyani sukhama yurangi. Adil sukhamen nolada a atma suruva manenna paraya. Atma jnani ellam aranyu konda ano orangu nada. Uttaram English le tamal madhi. Okay. So, so the English question. Yeah. Uh, you can translate into English. Question. Yeah, the English is actually the atnyani sleeps without no. With knowing, without knowing anything, very happily. This is because of the Atma Swarupa. My question is whether the Jnani, when he sleeps, with whether the Jnani is sleeping with this knowledge. You can uh, the answer me. is yes. Because Ajnani is having Ajnana ignorance, therefore he is sleeping with Ajnana ignorance. And the jnani is having the knowledge, so he is he's sleeping with the knowledge. Now the problem will come because uh, mostly people think that the sleep is connected to ajnana. No, mm -hmm. it's sleep is the production, deep sleep, the production of ignorance. So this wrong idea is there. Uh, but it is not correct. Sleep has no direct connection with Ajnana. Ajnana is connected with Jnana and Ajnana. Sleep is a natural process of body and mind and elements. So, I like a Jnani. Jnani has all the physical uh, qualities and all the phys uh, physical problems. Because it is nothing connected with uh, jnana, knowledge. No, he will be having all those, he will eat food and no, he will uh, do all these, uh, uh, whatever the works and everything he, he does. And if there's some pain or some disease is there in the body, he will like, experience that. He will feel all those so that is there. And similarly, this Tamoguna. Tamoguna is also a quality of the body, mind, and prakriti. So it will be there. So in sleep, you are sleeping with Tamoguna. So the sleep will come. Jnani will also, if he likes to sleep, he will sleep. If he doesn't want to sleep, he will not sleep. But it is not connected to Jnana or Ajnana. Okay, Jnani can mm -hmm. also sleep or Ajnani can also sleep. Yeah. Thank you, Samji. Yeah. So if anybody wants to ask question, please raise your hand. No, yeah. Please unmute Mr. Singh. You can ask the question. I shall. Uh, I shall. Uh, yes, Namo Narayan Swami. Namo Narayan Swami. Yeah, please. KD Singh from Lucknow. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. Swamiji, I have in Shloka Kramank 45. Uh, there is a word Malin Sattva. Uh, uh, does it signify Rajoguna? Yeah, it is uh, actually connected to Rajoguna. But why it is said Sattva? Because this, uh, here uh, Acharya wants to show that consciousness is reflected in that. No, in between I uh, just mentioned this. Rajoguna is also there because Rajoguna is supporting Tamoguna for its actions, its manifestation. Rajoguna is supporting Sattuguna for its manifestation. Because without Rajoguna, 
sattva and tamas cannot manifest. So therefore, rajoguna is also there. All these three gunas are always uh, interconnected. In the same shloka, there is <clears throat> adatte tat param brahma. Hmm. So this uh, param brahma, what is difference between param brahma and brahma? Param Brahma and Brahma is uh, Param Brahma, we call it as supreme, uh, pure consciousness, Sachidananda. And Brahma, Brahma means qualified Brahman with Maya. So Param Brahma and Brahma, when both are used uh, one after another, so we have to say this. So Brahma is qualified Brahma, the creator Brahma. Which is, uh, as we said, no, Abhinna Nimitto Badana Karana. So that Brahma is called qualified Brahma. Qualification, what is the qualification? Maya. So it means and here. Param Brahma, Param Brahma is without Maya. So it means Brahma here uh, has been defined as Ishwara. Correct. Yes. Ishwara. Okay. Because the Brahma, Shab, Brahma Shabda is used for Ishwara and Brahma as well. Sometimes even okay. for Hiranyagarbha is also Brahma Shabda is used. Okay. There, uh, there is an Upadan Kaj and Nimitta Kaj. Uh. So this Upadan Kaj is known as material Kaj. Correct. And Nimitta Karan, uh, this is a uh, Chetan Kaj. Chetan. Efficient cause as Chetan, yes. Okay. Oh. So, Amiji, last question. Oh. Uh, when we are in the deep sleep, correct. And uh, in the morning, when we get up oh. and uh, we realize that this was a very good sleep. Oh. So, any knowledge coming from Smriti? Hmm. And uh, Smriti is in Chitta. Mm. So it means uh, uh, Antakaran was not there. It was under hibernation. Mm. Then how is, is this Smriti came from Chitta in the morning while getting up? Yeah. yeah. Because the Actually, pure, conscien it... pure consciousness is doing nothing. Uh, yeah. The Atma is doing nothing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now I understood the question. Now, this uh, in deep sleep, though we say there is no mind, it means the activities of mind is not there. Okay. Mind is not dead because body, when body is alive, mind cannot be dead. Very simple that if, if if brain is not working or if brain dies, then what happens? Now, that person is not alive. Correct? Mm. So brain should work. Then only the body can survive. So therefore, in Shastra also it is said, when we say there is no mind, no intellect, no thing, it means we have no awareness of those and those activities are not there. That's all. Now, mind is not doing the... Uh, mind is not thinking. Mind is not, not knowing the objects from the indriyas because the sense organs are so sleeping. So, the all body is resting in that sense. So, it is, uh, we can say, activities of these uh, elements are not there. Mind, uh, uh, mind and uh, uh, intellect and ahankara, all th those are not there. That's all. But by their real form, it is there. But we can say the subconscious mind is there. If subconscious mind is not there, the other functions like digest, 
digestion and all those functions will not happen. So those functions are happening. Kidney is working. Heart is working. Digestion system is working. Brain is working. And uh, breathing, that is working. Everything is working. So it means that mind which is carrying all these functions is working there. The subconscious mind, the subtlest form of subconscious mind is working. So it is said in Upanishad, in Bhasha is also it is there. So by that we can say that Smriti is brought out. Like we bring our old memories. Similarly, the Smriti is brought out. It means in the Chitta, while we are sleeping, hmm. the experience of good, good sleep is recorded. Yeah. Yeah, registered, registered. But it comes out only when we come... Actually, actually in the... we have to say... Yeah, I am just uh, clarifying that. Yeah. Actually, we have to say... Uh, like, no, in negative way. Negative way in the sense... We were not... We, uh, uh, we were not experiencing anything from outside. So, not experiencing anything from outside is considered as good sleep and that is what we call it bliss. So, whenever you stop ex outside experiences, you will get relaxation, that's all. That is what we call it as. There is no separate experience of uh, uh, enjoyment or no, uh, happiness. The absence of sorrow, absence of pain, absence of awareness of body is considered to be the presence of uh, happiness there. Because the Swarupam is there. That is why it is like that. Then the, this, uh, you don't this, need any it, other uh, experience there. Yeah. So this internal experience, mm -hmm. the the outer experience is not there because the Correct. mind and chitta are not with the outer experience. Correct. The uh, but what here we are experiencing it is recorded in the chitta inside. Yeah. And when when we come uh, in the morning with sansara, yeah, waking, then it uh, comes waking, out, waking and we say that it was good sleep. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Swami. Oh, very good. Swamiji, there is one more question. Ah. Can we take up? Yeah, we just uh, see. What yeah. is it? Jay Sriji, please ask the question. Uh, Hari Om, Swamiji. Uh, uh, the, uh, I um, I could understand the line, the shloka 49, but 50 is not clear to me. So, if it is late, will you explain it again in the next class? Yeah, we will continue with that because the, uh, the 49 and 50 is connected. If you understand 49 well, uh, you will get the uh, understanding of 50 because the counter question is asked. Uh, the, the counter question is not clear. Yeah, the 49. Uh, the he was asking. The opponent asked the question yeah. and then yeah. the 50, the counter question is asked. Yeah, that, uh, that will you explain it again in the next class at 50? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will yeah, explain it uh, once more. We will take up that. Uh, yeah, okay. Class. Anyway, we will take up that in this class. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. Are you, are you. So we conclude with this. Yes, yes, Om Purnamadap Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudashyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om